welcome back to Cynthia and Tim. This is a useful and educational channel. We have conversations with and about children and youth across the world. And we are here to inspire the current generation of leaders across the world, across Africa, across Europe, wherever you are. Thank you so much for being part of this channel. Do comment below and tell us where you are watching from. My name is Cynthia Nyongesa. I am the founder of this platform amplifying the stories of young change makers and today we have a guest with us who will I will introduce shortly. The main of this the main aim of this show is to talk about the opportunity desk impact challenge. If you have not heard of opportunity desk, it is a platform where young people across the world are accessing opportunities from travel to attending conferences, internships, scholarships and so 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 much more. So do check out the Opportunity Desk platform. And in 2021, Cynthia Antem is a proud partner of the Opportunity Desk Impact Challenge, where we ask young people across the world to share how they have benefited from the platform and what they are planning to do in the future. And today we have one of the winners of the challenge. This will be a four-part series of the winners being featured. Today we have Joanna Osprao from Brazil. Thank you so, so much, Joanna, for joining us today. I am so, so excited to host you. So do tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, well, it's very nice to be here. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, you speak so well. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm already learning. So uh, my name is Joanna. I'm from Brazil from Florianópolis, it's an island here in the south of Brazil. I'm 30 years old and I'm very proud to have co-founded the Casa Origin. In English, it will be more like the origin house or more like a home, origin home. It's the translation from Casa Origin. Our language, our language here in Brazil is with a lot of R and R, so it's a little bit different. And I'm, I live here in Florianópolis for 30 years and I, I love to work in what I, I work, I love to work in what I'm doing here. We started being just origin and we kept like that for three years. And in 2018, we rethought our model and listening to what our customers were talking about us. And we wanted to listen what they had to say about us. And we realized that here in Casa Origin, we are a place of trust, of hope and actions to change the world for real at the local level. We are the first zero waste restaurant in Brazil. We serve food to original people who are unhappy with the structure of things today. And in everything we do, we keep in mind that it has to be with less environmental impact and more social impact. It's like we do everything thinking like that. And this says a lot about me too. I, I live by these rules. And this is me. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Joanna. That's a really, really amazing. And I hope our viewers out there are learning something already. You can be a change maker if you decide to. So make sure you keep following Joanna's story. Joanna, what's your Instagram handle? Do you have a website? Tell us where we can find you. Yes, we have an Instagram. It is casa.origin. Uh, we can write later. And we have an, an website. It is casaorigin.com. And we are in this social media, in those social media today. And we work very close to the customers. Like we have a store, a physical store. And it, here is where we have uh, the most of the connections and the actions. We work very locally, not wow. so much digi digital, but we are moving forward. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much as we continue to watch. Joanna talked a lot about her business model, providing food and also making money. So if you've never heard of social entrepreneurship, it's all about recognizing the social problems in your community and achieving a social change by employing entrepreneurial principles, processes, and operations. And we'll be able to learn more about that as we continue. 
So Joanna, what motivated you to participate in the opportunity that impact challenge right before we dive into your work? Well, uh, my partners and I were looking for ways to improve our capacities and train ourselves with people and institutions that speak the same language that, as us in terms of mentality or mindset. So we found out about the Opportunity Desk and saw that the challenge was on, was a little bit lucky. In reading the proposal of the challenge, we thought it was the perfect time to get us in touch with other parts of the world. We aim to take our business methodology to all parts of Brazil and the world. And this was the perfect opportunity to show what we are able to do when we believed, when we believe and act in changing the world. Uh, we were most motivated mainly by the desire to show what we are doing and see if we, if it would get anywhere. Uh, so here we are, and now we have the fuel that we needed to continue. And it's like a, a flame that is burning. And it was amazing for us to be part of it and to see that we can do more. We can. We are in this, the the right path. You know that that was the the most important thing. Important thing. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much, Joanna. So as you have heard, it's all about inspiring young people to also be change makers across the world. So Joanna, what would you tell a young person who wants to start an organization or a business model like yours? Um, well, I'm going to say something that I would have loved to have heard when I started getting lost in the world of work and real jobs in companies, etc. And the thing is, if you know a better way, uh, no matter your age, uh, if you don't have money or think you don't have much knowledge, look for people who share your ideas and start with what you have today and now. You don't have to, to wait to have money or to know everything that will never happen. And people used to say we were crazy in doing a business with no disposable plastic and no meat. And people discredited when we said that we wanted to convince our suppliers to change their packaging and they thought there would be no adhesion. Well, look where we are now. And the message is find out what you really feel inspired by, not just what you love, because we love a lot of things. And in the real world, there will be things at work that you won't love to do. So choose a uh, one thing, and don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to change this, this thing. The world is movement. We can change every day, everything, all the time. So I guess that's it. We need all the, the good ideas that are coming because the world is, is in a bad shape. So I, I want to inspire everyone to do what they think it will change the world. We really need that. Wow. So keyword there, as you heard what she has said, do not be afraid. Never, never be afraid to start, to start small. You have chosen to start any organization in any sector from health to education. But why did you choose this particular cause? Oh, okay. Well, uh, the food is a part of everything. Everybody needs to eat and it involves a lot of things. And actually, uh, it was a huge non-conformity -conform with the way business was being done uh, at, at all, in all the spheres. And we are customers too, me and my partners. We also like to order food. We also like to buy things online and go to bars and restaurants, but we couldn't find a place where we could eat without leaving a trail of waste and garbage behind. We were getting like desperate. We, that there's no place we can go and we need to create this place. So my partners and I got, got together and thought, hey, what we can do to create a solution for this? What, what we can do for the best change, change we, we might do? Well, that's the Casa, casa origin. I'm a little lost in saying casa origin and <laughs> origin house. I don't know what's the best way. <laughs> Just use either. I will also put that in the description box here. Yeah, so no worries. <laughs> okay. And yeah. that, that was it, actually. 
Yeah, wow. So that's amazing to hear. And for sure, for sure, every time I go to eat in a restaurant, there's always some trail of waste. Either it's a, a paper or some leftover food. So it's really interesting to see the work that you are doing and I really encourage you to keep going on. So I'd like for you, Joanna, to give us more details on how you engage your customers and your suppliers to apply your business. Because as I was reading your profile, you talked about enabling people to understand the work that you do. So how exactly do you engage with them? Well, uh, there are two different formats. We make them aware of the world's environmental and social problems in every chance we have. Via social media, with relevant and applicable content in the customer's personal life, in the physical store with information signs, but always in a nice and warm way, you know, because uh, people, well, each, each person has their time, you know, to, to change and to know something and we have to be patient. And we offer the best choice ever. The food is all vegan and delicious. It cannot not be delicious. It, have, it has to be the, the most delicious thing ever. So no one will complain. We need to convince people to change their habits and we do that with pleasure. So the package is as sustainable as possible and we let the originals know it, our customers are originals. And maybe the secret is communication. Communicating well makes all the difference. It's our biggest um, tool, I would say, and with the suppliers, we need to use one of our pillars that the guide us as our purpose, the pillar of localism. I'm going to talk about it later. And when we work with local suppliers, we are close to them. We know them and we can talk about what we think is important. And here, money is just one part of the job. First, we have to have a healthy world so we can have fair, fair trades and an economy, you know, if we don't have healthy people in a healthy world, we don't have an economy. It doesn't make any sense. So we have a, a ranking of priorities and we apply this methodology to all suppliers one at a time. We choose the, the big problem and we attack that and then we go slowing down. So there you got it. Healthy people equals to healthy world equals to healthy economy. So that's very, very important for you to know it. And I'm so, so glad to also understand that kind of concept. So some of the characteristics of social entrepreneurs include being visionary, being innovative, and being resourceful. And Joanna, you briefly mentioned that you have pillars, and I think the pillars that you have also apply to these three characteristics that I have mentioned being visionary, being innovative, and being resourceful. So could you explain the three pillars of your work? I know they are sustainability, localism, and network. Just explain the three of them in detail. Okay. Well, we choose three things that was present in all our actions, directly or indirectly. These three things became our pillars, and they are sustainability, localism, and network. The sustainability is in everything we do. We will choose the best possible option when it comes to sustainability. Sometimes we have to wait to make some harder changes, but the things that, we, but the things that have more impact in our business are, no questions asked, the best option we have, always. We transform and improve what is possible today and now, like I said before, we don't need all the money in the world. We can change one little package for a better one. Every day is a new change. And now, and, and of course, we plan the next steps of changing. Yeah. Uh, well, the second pillar is the one I was talking about before, the localism. We buy and invest in local goods and suppliers as a bargaining tool for more conscious products and services. With this pillar, we connect with our partners and encourage significant significant structural, structural changes in their, in their operations. We connect the customers and transform their reality with better options in decision-making. So we need to keep this closure, to, we, we need to keep our suppliers together and close to us 
so we can talk to them, so we can say what we think, so we can give them the options, so we can work together. It's more like uh, sharing, sharing what we are discovering here, and we, we don't need to hide or we don't need to sell everything. We can share this, you know. And the third pillar is the ne network, is the glue that sticks us all together. We generate results by connect all the originals and creative uh, stakeholders we have. Here I mean the clients, suppliers, and our team. This is our stakeholders. Encouraging them to commit to the structural change we are building and promoting. The network is the glue that, keep us all, that keeps our system running based on fair exchanges and based on abundance. The meaning of this is that, yes, we have enough to everybody. We just need to organize and change the way we think today. We need to start thinking like that. And this is our three pillars. Oh, thank you so much, Joanna, for summarizing that. And I think it's also important for you as a viewer to understand that all that Joanna talked about is really closely linked to the sustainable development goals, from sustainable use of resources, access to food, access to resources. And she has talked about customers and clients, and that's a really, a really big pillar when it comes to partnerships and also building the economy. So thank you so much, Joanna, for breaking that down. And how many people have you been able to impact so far since you started? Well, just uh, with our social media is uh, about 170,000 people. And here in our store, we, we can have like 60 or 70 person a day. And every day is new, new people and moves a lot. We have a lot of uh, different kind of people every day. So, and we want to expand. So we can project this to be big, bigger. Wow, wow. And I do hope you expand. I'd like to hear of your organization moving into Kenya at some point. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm going to be very happy when this happens. <laughs> yeah. So, Joanna, you, you sound like a very optimistic young woman, really determined to excel, to create change. But like any other organization that a young person would start, there are challenges. So what are some of the challenges that you and your team have experienced? Well, um, when, when we care this much, every day is a challenge. But I think uh, we have elected the biggest one, the biggest challenge of this journey which is to educate and sensitize our customers, our suppliers and staff and our team. We are in the business of changing the world, of changing the status quo. So uh, the food we serve is the means and the hardest thing to do is to convince our public every day that this is the best option, because it is a food that regenerates the soil, pays those people involved very well does not deforest and does not use animals. Anyway, our biggest challenge today is to change people's minds and it serves for the customers, suppliers, and our staff team. It's, it's like a, change, it, um, a mindset change. It's the, the hardest thing to do. Yes, for sure. And it's very true once people are used to a certain kind of behavior, they've been born into a certain kind of behavior. It's so difficult for them to change and just get con convinced that this is the right way to go. For us to support our economy, for us to create jobs, this is really the way to go. And so to all our viewers, reminding all of you as young people and to all our stakeholders, that you can work with young social entrepreneurs by financing youth-led initiatives like Joanna's, and you can also enhance their visibility. So make sure you watch this video and keep sharing across your different platforms so that more young people are able to understand Joanna's work and similar kinds of initiatives. So Joanna, what is your parting shot for our viewers? Well, I uh, would like to say that we need people to understand that the current mindset is created an unviable world for everyone. We need better companies, we need better citizens and better governments. We are creating this global pact in the local sphere and using the UN Global Goals, actually, we act on the four, the 17 
uh, sorry, we act on the two, 11, 12, and 17 uh, global goals. And we count on everyone that is watching us to be part of this real change. Every person matter, every opinion matter, everything you can do is important. So come with us, come to be the uh, part of the solution. You know, that's what we need now. Joanna, it's been so amazing to host you on Cynthia Unchained. It's exciting to have young people all the way from Brazil. You are the first person from Brazil that I am hosting on my platform. So that is an honor for me as well. Uh, <laughs> it's an honor for me too. Yeah. Oh and my keep, God. <laughs> and keep up the great work. Keep up the amazing work, inspiring all young people across the, the globe training them, bringing change. I mean, we are the ones that we have been waiting for. <laughs> okay, we are, we are waiting for all of you here in Brazil to visit <laughs> us. <laughs> and you're going to see us everywhere. We really are going to change the world together. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And let's change the world. <laughs> Yes, for sure. So thank you so, so much, Joanna. I look forward to coming to Brazil. Thank you so much to all our viewers who have stayed tuned to the end of this video. A call to action for you guys is to check out the Opportunity Desk website and get to learn about more opportunities that you can access as a young person. Joanna went out and looked at it. She participated in the Opportunity Desk Impact Challenge and she is one of our winners. So that tells you that there's a lot of opportunities for young people out there. I'd like to see you in the next episode. So make sure you tell a friend, tell a friend, and stay tuned to Cynthia and Tim as usual. Bye. Oh, I say bye too. <laughs> <laughs>